gross simplifications, misunderstandings and sheer deception. That's how one French journalist is describing a new documentary about Ukraine, aired on France's TV network Canal Plus on Monday. The expose, titled The Masks of the Revolution, sets out to examine the role of radical groups during the 2014 uprising and later during clashes in Odessa that led to a deadly fire at the trade union's house. The expose is produced by Paul Moreira, a renowned filmmaker, but has sparked a backlash led by Ukrainian diplomats and a number of prominent French reporters. And that's what we're going to look at today on the Press Review. So let's start with an opinion piece by Gulliver Cragg, writing for the English language newspaper, the Kiev Post. The journalist firstly outlines several of the documentary's distorted facts and missing components. He writes, there are the blatant manipulations. A tiny rally by the nationalist Svoboda party is accompanied by commentary about Ukrainians' economic woes, suggesting that these are pushing up the party's poll ratings. But he doesn't actually present those poll ratings because, annoyingly, they don't fit his assumptions. But who exactly is to blame? According to Craig, not just the French filmmaker, but also the Ukrainian government. A number of faults are highlighted. For example, a previous ban on BBC reporters, the hiring of a suspected neo-Nazi as a regional police chief, and for allowing the far-right Azov Battalion to wear their Nazi-style symbols. He writes, whatever the reasons behind them, decisions like these are a PR disaster for Kiev. It is they, as much as Russian propaganda, that have fueled a perception of Ukraine as a country where the far-right have too much influence. Meanwhile, prior to the film's airing on Monday, Le Monde also shone a spotlight on the film's distortions. Benedict Vignier writes, There is one major absence, Russian aggression in Ukraine. The war in Donbass is not mentioned until the middle of the film, and only for minutes. The forced annexation of Crimea is summed up in one phrase. After the Ukrainian revolution, its population voted overwhelmingly in a referendum to join with Russia. This is just a taster of blogs and reports about the controversial French film about Ukraine. In response, Paul Moriera defends his work, saying his probe was contrary to the commonly accepted narrative. But we can only wait and see what impact the film will have on French opinions of Ukraine. That's all we have time for. For the Press Review, this is Ukraine Today.